welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. First, yes, it's July, and yes, I am wearing my Christmas mouse ears. Why, you ask? Well, I'm gonna let you guess. Why do you think? Why would I be wearing Christmas mouse ears in the middle of July? Well, because it's halfway to Christmas, of course, which means Disney announced some really great things. So, it is time for my updates video for which we will get into the Christmas festivities that have recently been announced. But let's start from the very beginning, guys. So since my last updates video, Disney announced stuff literally later that day. <laughs> I can't tell you how frustrating it is when I film a video and literally an hour later, Disney like blows up the internet and announces all these great things. So. First things first is they continued with more October 1st announcements. Of course, October 1st is the beginning of the 50th anniversary over at Disney World. So the first thing they announced is that resort guests, that is people staying on Disney property, will be able to enter the parks before other guests. Now this is huge. I can't tell you how huge this is and I am so excited for it. Now I know they only announced 30 minutes and I get it. A lot of people are frustrated. What do you mean I'm staying on property and I only get 30 minutes? Disney could at least give us an hour. I get it guys. An hour is definitely better than 30 minutes, but don't discount those 30 minutes. I cannot tell you how much you can get done in 30 minutes. When you show up to a park at rope drop versus 30 minutes later, it's like a whole different world has passed in those 30 minutes. So that extra 30 minutes means you might be able to ride one of the popular rides first. It might mean the difference between a three hour wait and a 30 minute wait. Once all those other guests are going through the turnstiles, it's who knows what's gonna happen time. But in those 30 minutes, this is time for you to maximize your experience and come up with a game plan because it could mean that you're riding Ratatouille before other people. So think about it. Ratatouille, uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, uh, Slinky Dog, Seven Dwarf Mine Train, all those really key rides that are always uh, really popular. This, this could be it for you guys. This could be the best way to avoid those long lines. So don't discount a half an hour. So yeah, resort guests, which means me, I get in an extra 30 minutes early starting October 1st. This is fabulous news. I absolutely love it. So they also announced starting October 1st that Disney resort guests staying at a deluxe property will have additional evening hours at select parks on select days, which means those of you who are staying at a Disney deluxe resort will have extra hours in the parks. Pretty much every evening, the nooks and the crannies of this haven't really come out, but essentially one day Magic Kingdom, one day Epcot, one day Hollywood Studios, and so on. And in those extra evening hours, that could be huge too, guys. That could be the difference between you riding Ratatouille. It could be the difference between waiting four to six hours and waiting an hour. So again, Disney is trying to give perks back to Disney resort guests and I absolutely love it. I love it because I personally stay on Disney property and being a travel agent, that is what I book. That is what I sell to my clients. So yeah, Disney, bring it on. We want more perks to Disney resort guests. But moving on, the other thing they announced is the meal plan. Woohoo! The meal plan is coming back. That's what they announced. That's it, that's all they said. The meal plan is coming back. They don't know when, they don't know how, just that it's coming back. Me personally, I don't think they're gonna bring back the meal plan until they are ready to bring back probably 99% of the meals and bringing them back to full capacity. You just can't sell a meal plan to your guests when they don't really have all the openings to fill the slots. 
Meaning, what's the point of having the meal plan if I can't actually get dining reservations? So, me personally, I think they will come out with the meal plan once they have all those restaurants open and all the tables back to how they were pre-COVID, which I am sure Disney is working on. So yeah, guys, don't trust all those blogs out there that said the meal plan's coming back because we had a ton of people asking like it was coming back that day. No, 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 it's coming back. That's it. We don't know when, we don't know how, but it's coming back. And that is what's truly exciting for those of you who don't know. The meal plan was a way for Disney guests to basically save up to 35% off on dining at Disney. And I know some of you are like the meal plan, that didn't do anything for me. Maybe you weren't doing it right. That's all I'm gonna say guys, as a travel agent, this is something I coach my clients with daily, is how to maximize that Disney meal plan to be best for you and to actually save that 35%. So anyway, when the meal plan does finally come out with details, I will 100% present that to you. But yeah, that was some big news, guys. The meal plan is coming back. And a little kind of slippy thing they slipped in there that they didn't really announce was kind of interesting. So for those of you who may not remember, it was literally last week, Elsa, the hurricane was headed towards Florida. Who remembers this, Elsa, remember? Okay, so Elsa was headed towards Florida. We weren't sure if it was gonna hit Orlando or not. Disney went ahead and kind of popped up hurricane to go meals. Did you guys know this? It's so interesting. I will pop up what uh, the meals actually were, but just out of the blue, Disney Resort uh, dining locations had a uh, hurricane to go meals just kind of popped up both breakfast and a lunch and dinner it was everything between like a bagel and cereal to like kind of like a turkey sandwich and they even had a vegetarian option it was more or less staples to kind of keep in your room to keep in your room refrigerator just in case a hurricane or a heavy storm does come about now I know a lot of people might have gotten freaked out about this what do you mean disney's got hurricane meals is a hurricane coming no, calm down guys. I think this is a great idea on Disney's part because when the last hurricane actually came uh, to Florida, I wanna say it was Irma, Disney did shut down for kind of sort of a day and there was issues with getting all those masses of people food. Disney wasn't quite prepared with the amount of food that all the guests were really gonna need. This is a way for you to plan ahead. So if you are actually on property, if you are, kind of get nervous of a hurricane or some heavy storms, the fact that you have the ability to get some to-go meals to keep in your refrigerator to make you feel kind of, I don't know, that you're planned ahead for an impromptu hurricane is a great idea on Disney part. So Disney, love that. I love that you came out with hurricane to-go meals. Um, I did find it interesting they didn't make an announcement about it. Again, maybe they weren't trying to they didn't want to scare anybody, but I, I really did like the concept of, um, it was essentially like a sandwich and like a fruit snack and some other snack and like water plus an additional drink. Uh, and it came with the napkins and the condiments and the silverware. So it definitely was like a to-go kit for you to keep in your room should something happen. And even if a hurricane doesn't actually hit Disney World, you know, fingers crossed, uh, hurricanes that are close by could bring on lots of storms and rainy weather. And a lot of those Disney resorts, you are in outside buildings. You are not in buildings connected to the lobby or connected to where the food source is. So the effect that you would have to leave your outdoor building and walk sometimes quite a distance to the lobby or to where the food source is might be a little intimidating, especially when the rain is coming on that quick. So to have the ability to get these to-go meals and plan ahead for your family, I don't know, sorry guys, I find that huge. I found that an excellent idea on Disney's part. So yeah, had to mention that, but let's keep going. So resort openings, Disney announced finally, remember it was a rumor? It was a rumor I presented and it's finally happening. Disney is reopening the remaining of their Disney resort hotels, woo woo. Starting September 16th, All Stars Music will be fully open. 
Port Orleans Riverside. Now this is the one everyone's been waiting for. The crowd favorite moderate resort is opening October 14th. And of course it's sister resort, which is Port Orleans French Quarter will be opening October 28th. So come October 28th with both the Port Orleans resorts open. I mean, it's kind of like COVID's over guys. I am so excited for these resorts to reopen. And of course, All Star Sports is reopening December 9th. So yeah, once Disney gets all those restaurants up and running, I think we are kind of almost good to go here with all this uh, COVID policies, changes and procedures. I think they're pretty much gonna be over. It's almost like COVID never happened in the Disney world, which is kind of great. Another thing that came out was food and wine. So we knew food and wine was gonna happen because it happens every year, but they came out with menus. So yeah, you can now go and look up the menus for each individual country and kiosk and kind of plan ahead to what menu items you may want. And I think I mentioned this before, I don't have my phone with me, but there's an app you can go to, I'm gonna pop it up on the screen, that will actually tell you all the menu items as well. So when you're in the park, you can quickly open up this app and figure out what items you want. But this all starts July 15th. So pretty much um, now. Food and wine is available now. So yeah, absolutely love food and wine. I will be there not once, but twice. And I am so excited. Bring it on food and wine, but let's keep going. So another thing that wasn't quite announced, but people in my field, again, travel agent, we found out that the firework cruises are back, guys. In case you do not know what that means, these are not like the big, cruises that would house you know multiple people these are individual like charter boats that come with a captain and you kind of pay a lump sum for your entire party but they basically go and take the boat over to the seven seas lagoon or over to the waterways near epcot and you can watch the fireworks with your family and friends um, on a boat which is pretty exciting so yeah the firework cruises are back for both magic kingdom and Epcot, and I don't know what the updated price is because the phone lines to uh, reserve this cruise are in the two hour mark, but the chartered boat that comes with a captain usually features assorted snacks and soft drinks. It is usually a 20, 25 foot boat that seats up to 10 guests and it's roughly $400 for that entire experience. So yeah, if that's something you are looking forward to doing, it's back. I will say this is something Nina has never done. I have never done that. I have never had an extra $400 to spend uh, for a chartered boat. I think I totally could if I was going to Disney with like an extended family or a bunch of friends. So if you are in that situation where you're coming with a big group of people or you've got like a couple of families you can kind of divide the cost with, it just sounds amazing. To watch fireworks from a boat sounds phenomenal. I have done the dessert cruises, but those aren't back yet. So yeah, firework cruises are back guys and they are booking up to July right now. So yeah, but back to my headband right here. It's Christmas time. Okay, sort of Christmas time. It's halfway to Christmas time. So is Christmas really starting again or yet? Kind of, sort of, maybe. They did announce a lot of really great things for the holidays. First things is the official holiday season does now have a date and that is November 12th. So officially November 12th, Christmas is will be here. And that's absolutely amazing. But I must warn you, a bunch of people are getting confused by this date because a lot of people purposely book the end of October and the beginning of November so that they can end Halloween and wake up to Christmas. This has not changed, guys. November 12th is just the date when they expect all the decorations to be up. Of course, all putting up the decorations does take time. So come November 1st, they usually do Magic Kingdom first. Magic Kingdom should be up primarily, mostly November 1st through the 2nd. And then they start working on the other parks and the resorts. But yeah, officially November 12th, Christmas will be here at Disney World. Now, they did not, they announced a bunch of really great things. 
One thing they didn't quite announce is the candlelight processional. So I'm gonna go through the things that they announced, but when they announced Epcot and all the things like the cookie, uh, it's not called the cookie strolls at the cookie stroll that they're going to be doing and all the you know the, the festivities that they do in all the individual countries what they skipped out on was the candlelight processional so no one really knows is it coming back or has it been discontinued again for another year the fact that they didn't announce it makes me feel like they might be taking another year off from the candlelight processional but again more info is probably to come, but they did announce gingerbread houses. Absolutely love the gingerbread houses. For those of you who don't know, most of the resorts, especially the deluxe resorts, have a gingerbread house display. And of course the Grand Floridian has the big gingerbread house display that actually can house a cast member, like a human fits inside this display. That's how big it is. Now they didn't specifically announce the Grand Floridian. They just wrote select resorts but they would, they would be crazy not to put the big one up. So yeah, gingerbread houses are back, guys. In addition to that, the, the Christmas tree stroll is back, and that's over at Disney Springs. They usually had an area kind of towards the back, sort of like the back of the world of Disney over there, and they would have tons and tons of different Christmas trees with different themes, and oh my gosh, they were so... Gorgeous, absolutely love the Christmas tree stroll. And of course, within that, they would have snow falling and they usually would sell like hot chocolates and treats and things throughout the stroll. But yeah, the Christmas tree stroll is back. Absolutely love that. Now, Hollywood Studios, they did announce uh, the traditional like uh, Christmas theming of Hollywood and Vine, the character meal over there will have its Christmas splendor. But yeah, the Tower of Terror projections are back which i love they do these really fun animated projections on the tower of terror and it's absolutely gorgeous so that is back as well but the big 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 announcement is you ready mickey's very merry christmas party will not be returning but what they are going to do is disney's very merriest which is gonna be an after hours event, similar to Boobash. In fact, it pretty much sounds like the carbon copy of Boobash, just Christmas. So it sounds kind of like the changes and the exceptions they did for Boobash is what they're doing for Disney's Very Marius. They did say it will be a four hour event. Um, it will be select nights from December 8th or November 8th through December 21st which is also interesting because previous they said Christmas is gonna officially start November 12th, but yet the after hours event is gonna start November 8th. So don't get that confused. They also said that ticket sales will come out next month. And those of you staying at a Dis Disney resort property will get first dibs just like with Boobash. So here's the information for you guys. You can enter as early as 7 p.m. Again, just like Boobash. And as long as you have tickets for the actual party, you do not need to reserve a park pass reservation for the event. Now the party will go from 9 a.m. till 9 a.m. 9 p.m. until 1 a.m. Now, me personally, that's a late night party. If I was a local, I'd be all over this thing but it is really, really hard to play in the park all day long and then go to a really, really late night party to then play in the park again the next day. So if you really plan on doing this party, you might wanna finagle and work out some of your other plans because I'm telling you this, if you're bringing kiddos to this party and you expect them to stay up till at least midnight or 1 a.m., you're gonna have some tired kiddos. I kinda wish this party started a little bit earlier because there's no way my youngest would be able to do this party. There's just no way. He um, he poops out pretty, pretty early, but yeah, it's 9 p.m. until 1 a.m. Now, these are the things they announced that are definitely happening for this Disney's Very Merriest After Hours event. First thing is they will, it will snow on Main Street. So just like Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, 
it will snow on Main Street, which was one of my favorite parts of that party, so I'm glad that's coming back. Fireworks. So the Christmas version will have fireworks. In fact, they'll have the Minis Wonderful Christmas Fireworks Show, which I do believe is what they had before, so that's pretty exciting. Of course, it's gonna include snacks. All after hours events do include snacks within the price of an after hours event. They listed things like holiday treats, ice cream, popcorn, and bottled drinks. That's pretty traditional for an after hours event. They did uh, say that they will do attraction overlays this year, which is pretty great. So all those rides that traditionally have a Christmas overlay, I'm hoping we'll have their overlays again uh, Jingle Cruise, Small World. Small World have a Christmas overlay? Disneyland's Small World has a Christmas overlay. Uh, brain fart, sorry guys. But anyway, attraction overlays are coming back along with projections on the Cinderella's Castle. So I'm assuming when they're not doing the fireworks show, that's when the projections on the castle will indeed happen. Of course, they announced character sightings throughout the park. They didn't list anything like meet and greets, so I would expect no signatures, no hugging, nothing like that. Just kind of characters walking around. Maybe you can do a little photo bomb kind of thing. Um, they did list low weights for, for rides, so they are going to keep open about 20 different attractions so that this is a great opportunity to ride those rides with little to no weight. Of course, they're gonna have themed food and beverages for purchases. Of course, they're gonna have special decor lighting and music, and they're gonna have themed photo pass opportunities, which again is a great way to kind of remember the experience is with um, a photo pass picture, which if you have the memory maker, this would be included. So yeah, I would expect this party to be about the same price as Boobash. So roughly 130 to $200 per person. Boobash got more expensive the closer it got to Christmas. So I would expect those last few days in December to be in that $200 zone. I expect those first few nights in November to be in the 130 to 150 zone. At least that's what Nina is predicting. So yeah, that is the news thus far in July. However, I need to net mention this. There was a rumor that I put out, I think it was last video, and at the time of me filming this video, Disney has not confirmed this rumor to be true, but I have more info. So I'm basically gonna say that 99.9% .9 chance the Epcot monorail is opening up and as early as right now. As early as you watching this video, the Epcot monorail could indeed be open. They have hired guests, or guests, they have hired cast members for the Epcot monorail and they have been training and doing all sorts of things and they have been scheduled to work this weekend right now. So yeah, as the time this video airs, the Epcot monorail could be up and running and if it's not yet, coming soon. Again, not totally confirmed as I film this, but I'm pretty, pretty, pretty much sure it's happening, which is huge. It's huge for all those people staying at those monorail resorts. It's huge for anyone with a park hopper because now it's gonna be easier to hop from Magic Kingdom to Epcot and back again. And it's for as long as Epcot continues to not open until 11, you can still start your day at Magic Kingdom and then hop over to Epcot at that two o'clock hopping point, which pretty much gives you a lot of time at Epcot because Epcot stays open the latest. This is also huge for the 50th anniversary. So you can kind of start at one, hop to the other, go back to the other for fireworks, and you can kind of go between the two. So absolutely love that the Epcot monorail is uh, up and running, absolutely love that. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I expect more information to come out about the Christmas party and other Christmas events. All those other kind of Christmas events that always have happened are still coming back. I was just trying to stick to the big stuff. I'm curious about uh, Candlelight Processional. The fact they didn't mention it kind of makes me feel like it's a not going to happen thing. But maybe they're just trying to secure more... Um, more guest stars. I mean, who knows, really. But yeah, 
Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray. Hit the bell icon for notifications so that you can, you know, be the first to know when more videos of mine come out. Please like this video and comment. I wanna know what you're thinking about this Christmas party. Are you excited? Will you get tickets? We will be there for this time of year. Um, we always are. We love Christmas at Disney, but it's a late night party and the tickets can get pricey. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to see how Boo Bash goes first before I get a ticket. But I'm curious uh, what you guys think. So yeah, let me know, comment, like, and uh, as always guys, mahalo for watching. Nina out. Oh.